Welcome back guys, today I'm at my cousin Adam's shop. We're gonna build a kit so we can narrow this rear end. <laughs> have our rear end here, went ahead and took my cover off. We have the bearing races out, which Adam is gonna use as a measurement to cut our pucks, because we're gonna cut pucks to go in inside there. Um, also these pieces. But uh, here's the rod we found, inch and a quarter piece of stock. It's about 59 inches long, which is plenty. And we went ahead and marked our measurements. We're going to be cutting this to 46 and an eighth, I believe, is what we came up with. And from there, these are two and a quarter inch long, so we'll end up just over 50 inches. Um, and here's the piece of material he's going to be using. Yeah. So this was a piece of stock that I had salvaged out of a um, out of an old gearbox shaft. So it's probably 4140. Not that it really matters. But what we'll do is we'll we'll set this up in the lathe. I'll go ahead and turn this to our proper diameter that we need. We'll drill it, I'll use an inch and a quarter reamer right there, and we'll just ream the, the hole, and that'll give it enough clearance for that rod, for it to slip over the rod. Then we'll take it out, go to the bandsaw, and just cut our disc. Then from there, we'll just deburr the outside and the inside uh, the edges of it, and then that should, that should work fine. Cool. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna get y'all some uh, action shots on the lathe, and get to work on this thing. Okay, checking in with Adam here. He's setting up the lathe for this piece of uh, stock we have. This is the yeah. four jaw king right here, man. Uh, four jaw king, huh? Four jaw king. Heard that in a while. <laughs> the uh, the cut on this right here, this this was not cut by me. This that face. It, but you see how. Yeah, that face isn't straight. Is. So I'm gonna go ahead and face this using the steady rest. Face it, and we'll center drill it, and we'll start doing our turn. Awesome. Adam went ahead and did a face cut right there because that piece of material wasn't straight. Other than that, she's ready to turn. So he's doing the measurements on all of our pieces over here. We have six pieces we're gonna cut. Yeah. So we're gonna make a couple pucks. This is be the, for the extras that you want here for later on. Right. In case you're narrowing for a factory in. Yeah, if I'm gonna narrow a nine and a quarter with a factory end cap, I'll have the pucks to be able to do that. And you may be asking, why are we making a kit? Well, they don't make kits for nine and a quarter Mopars. They only do like Dana 60s and eight and three quarters. So now we're gonna have our own kit. All right, let's start making some chips here. Oh, it's flying. Chips are flying, that's hot. <laughs> wow, I can tell. See how they turn blue? Yeah. Hot. Hot. How much are you taking off right there? Uh, it's 200,000. Wow. 200. That's a lot. <laughs> I tried to touch it. No. <laughs> Here's our first cut. He took 200 thousandths on that cut. Yeah. And we're going to go down to 2.530. So we got three different sizes. We're going to have this will be one for, uh, for a different size puck. We'll got this one here, and then we're going to turn this for the yeah. other two. Yeah, so generally about 2.3, two 2.8, two and 3.03 or this something like our, that. This is our sizing that we're going to make right there. Okay. 2.530, 2.871, 3.307. Yep. And they're all going to be somewhere around three quarters thick. That's not yeah. critical. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're making use of all this stock. We're going to cut the narrow, the smallest piece, next up, next up. Then we'll take them to the bandsaw and just chop them all off. Yep. That's, That's it. it. Okay. So Adam is setting up to do the last journal here, and we are half an inch over on size. So he's going to take two quarter inch cuts off of this thing. Chipping off the way he wants, I'm assuming. No. All right. 
see if I can speed, speed right up here. There we go. diameters are done and Adam's working on a pilot hole right now using a half inch drill bit then we'll move up to a just something under a quarter inch and a quarter and then we'll use the inch and a quarter reamer to finish it up and the fluid you see there is just a coolant a mixture of water and oil Obviously the oil is going to keep the machine from rusting and the water and water oil mixture is keeping the bit cool while it's drilling. Okay, so now we've stepped up to a 1 and 13 64 bit. So is the reamer a more precise tool than a drill bit? Yes. Okay, that's why the we reamer went. reamer is designed to uh, make a nice true round hole on size. Okay. A drill bit is not. A drill, drill, drill bit, bit will some... make a hole through there and it's going to be... Triangular sometimes, sometimes, right? Sometimes it will be and it's not going to be exact on size. The reamer is designed to put it on the size that you want. As okay. long as you've got the machine running the way it should be, a okay. reamer is not guaranteed to put it on the exact hole size either. You could be one or two thousandths off if, if uh, the reamer is not in line with the spindle like it should be. But still better than a drill bit? Yes. Okay, absolutely. Time to put a nice finish in the hole and put it right on the surface. Okay, very good. Now I think we're ready to start cutting, right? Um, so we're going to cut off two pieces here, two pieces here, and two pieces there. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to use the bandsaw for that, right? Yeah, we'll put okay. the bandsaw. Next step here, we're just doing a little deburr. Yeah. There is a, uh, you know, sharp ends, sharp corners. So he's just taking the, the sharp edges off of it for us. And as you can see up here, this is what I'm talking about, having a sharp edge. And you can see that, that piece right there has got a sharp piece left on it. And then these are the ones that we've cleaned up. Yep. Always deburr your parts. All yep. you welders and fabricators and home gamers, whenever you're cutting something, always deburr your parts. That's what you that's what you got grinders for and belt sanders and all that stuff. Files. <laughs> Get out there and deburr your parts because you don't want to cut your hands open on all them sharp edges like that. Yeah, it's sure enough sharp. We're, I asked Alex about facing these things off. And we're just we're not going to go all fancy A bomb style. We're just going to leave them uh, rough cut. Just, we're just going to leave them rough cut. Yeah. And just even this is more than what we originally were. We're just going to hit them with the bell sander. But I'm, it just gets the best of me, man. Yeah. Got to do it. 
Yeah, what he's talking about is facing right here where the um, the, the saw cut. The saw cut, yeah. Making and it look like the very like this right here. See, this yeah, would be finished. a face cut. I could I could face all them off to make them look like that and look really pretty. Yeah, maybe after we get done, we can make them pretty, but just trying, trying to get, get trying to get it all done in um, one day. Yeah, one day. So we'll see if we have time left over. Yeah. Okay, so we have everything done as far as building our kit to help us out to narrow this rear end. We have an extra set of pucks there for narrowing nine and a quarter with the factory ends. Then we have our ends here, our pucks, that fit perfect. And then these will go inside the carrier. But Adam did a great job on this, saved us a ton of money. You can see how that fits perfect, so we're going to have a perfect setup for narrowing this thing. It'll be a two-part video, so the next video you're going to see us narrowing the rear end, but there's so much content, we're just going to do the machining for this first video, and then you'll see us narrow the rear end on the second one. See you next time, guys. See you.